Vim is a popular editor that implements VI bindings and it's available in most systems. On my system, I have Vim 8.2 installed, though I actually prefer to use NeoVim, which is just called NVim here. And the great thing about Vim is that if you go to another computer, you're bound to have Vim already there and ready to use. Now, if you launch regular Vim with no config, you'll find a lot of things limiting because it's running in like a legacy mode by default. And this is why things like Vim Sensible exists so that it gets your backspace and whatnot working and your searching working as you just naturally expect it would. But the easier way, instead of just using a plugin, is just, just to use NeoVim because NeoVim basically has the same defaults without using a plugin and it's easier just to get going with it. So I recommend you start just using NeoVim for the time being. To configure Vim or NeoVim, you need a config file. So traditionally, this would be called the VimRC file. But what you can do for NeoVim, because it has a different location, is just to symlink them both. So basically, if you put something in this config here, it's also the exact same config in NeoVim. Now typing Vim config in Vim, in Vim, it's a bit laborious. So what I've done is just made a bind to Vim config. So I just run Vim config here. So I'm just starting from scratch here, just so that you know how to configure things yourself. The one I always like to start with is spelling. An editor needs a spell checker, right? So the way it works is that if I rerun this and I press F8, it will tell me if this is a spelling typo. Now the binds take some getting used to, but let me just uh, record them so you can see them. So F8 turns on and off. And then I press Z equals, it gives me some uh, suggestions. And you can see number one is what I would choose uh, to correct it. And I'll just click one, enter. And you see, there I've corrected a typo. The next thing I really like to configure is this list cars. So these are special characters that tell me, um, show if there's a tab or not. So if I hit tab here without this config being applied, it doesn't show me that this is a tab because it's an invisible character. Now, if I launch it again, you can see that there's this like funny, I don't know, arrow shape and these dot dot dot. That means that there's a tab. Knowing the difference between a space and a tab, I think is fundamental. It's especially important if you use make. I highly recommend you have list cars configured. The next thing I like to configure is uh, an undo history with set undo file. So if I make some changes here and and then I undo them, I won't have history about that. So I go back in here, I redo, there's no history. Now if I do that again, since now undo file is applied, if I make some changes here and then I delete them, there should be an ability to restore. See, undo. 
that's because I've got this undo file. I'm not sure where it is by default, but you can always tell or find out yourself by just going help undo file and it'll probably tell you where it is somewhere. Another little thing I like to have, it's quite a complicated line, is have a F5 bind to clear white space. Kind of annoys me. F5 to clear white space. You see, thanks to list cars above here, if I if I do a space here, you can see the sort of extra space. This looks ugly. So the way to get rid of it is pressing F5. Let me just reload my config. I press F5. And you see the spaces are removed. Highly recommended. So on my system, control backspace removes the last word in a browser. It also removes the last word in my terminal. And I like to have the same thing happening in my Vim config. So the way that I do that, control backspace to remove last word. This insert remap binds control H, which is control backspace to control W, which is the default for moving last word. So right now um, it's not applied, you can see. But if I reload my config with this new configuration line, control backspace does indeed remove the last word. Very handy and makes everything consistent on my machine. Now the real crazy power with Vim and the Vim is when you configure it to use plugins. So you install a plugin, follow the instructions above, but essentially you need a line like this. Oops. You need a begin line and you need an end line. There are so many plugins to choose from, though I highly recommend using this one called the asynchronous lint engine. So this helps you just lint anything that you write. So how do you install it? Read the instructions. It's, uh, well, they don't make it easy. So you basically say plug and then the name of the repo here. So dense analysis ale. And then you run plug install. Oops. Reload the config, colon plug, install. Right. So the power of this particular plugin is that when you edit YAML files, it's able to detect any problems with it, assuming you've got YAML lint installed, which I do. Because it uses a particular program, it's documented somewhere here. So let's edit some YAML. And you can see that it shows you that there's too many spaces or if you have the wrong indentation, it will show you. So let's just recap. In my Vim config that I walk through, I set up spelling. I set up uh, a way for it to indicate spaces and tabs so it shows you invisible characters I got an undo history that persists I got this silly bind that sort of clears up white white space with the with just by pressing F5 I have a keyboard remapping for control backspace to remove word and I've set up the dense analysis AL linting plugin there are many other plugins to choose from so Here's my own config that you can view in GitHub. It's a bit of a mess. I have some extra things, but essentially what I've shown you is what I use. And I encourage you to keep your configuration as simple as possible 
and hence it's just easier to manage. Thank you for watching. Please give the video a like.